good morning students so we'll continue from yesterday's class so yesterday we saw about the chemical bond how the molecule is stable so that how the atoms combine together how the molecules get its stability so different theories have been put forward one we saw causal and lewis theory where causal said that if any molecule has eight electrons in the valence shell then the molecule will attain a stable configuration so lewis also said that the electrons which is present in the outermost shell are called as valence electrons and these valence electrons involved in the bond formation and then he represented the electrons in the valence shell as dots so let me put the dots so like lithium has one electron in the valence shell likewise he gave the lewis dot structure then for the compounds how to draw for the compounds that also was explained so any compound or any ion or any species we can draw lewis dot structures so that each and every atom gets eight electrons in the outermost shell so yesterday we saw some examples so in the notes also have given some examples you can practice now next we go for the octet rule so the lewis said is it right? the atoms when it gets eight electrons in the outermost shell they are stable so from this they frame the octet rule octet rule which is very important in one mark and two mark question and two marks okay so you have to read what is octet rule so octet means we know eight electrons so according to this rule an atom can combine together either by transfer of electron is it right so we can give one electron it can transfer completely one electron or it may share the electrons between atoms so that it will have octet in their valence shell so according to this rule according to this rule atom combine together either by either by transfer of electron either by transfer of electrons or by sharing of electrons either by sharing of electrons in order to have in order to have octet in order to have octet in the valence shell so this is called as octet rule so the atom will get eight electrons in the valence shell that is octet either by transfer of electrons from one atom to another or by sharing of electrons so that it gets the eight electrons in the valence shell so very important you have to read this now when they found the compound so many compounds are there isn't it but some compounds does not have eight electrons in the outermost shell but still it is having high stability so there are limitations this a limitations means not all this octet rule will not apply is not applying for all the compounds there are some limitations there are some exceptions are there so what are those so limitations again this also they will ask you in two marks limitations right any two 
limitations means this is not applied to all the compounds. Some compounds does not apply to this octet rule. So now you see, for example, first one. Incomplete octet. Incomplete octet. So if you see the outermost shell of the compound, for example, BCL3. BCL3 is boron trichloride. So boron has three electrons in the outermost shell. Isn't it? We know boron atomic number is 5. So two electrons goes into the inner orbit. Outside you have three electrons. Now the chlorine combines here. So I put as an into here. Chlorine. Chlorine combines with boron. Sharing of electrons takes place. So this compound is stable. But you see the boron. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons only. So boron outermost shell contains 6 electrons only but it is highly stable. But what they said? The atom must have 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Then only it will be stable they said. But some compounds does not have 8 electrons. Hence, but it is having stability. Now, another example if you see BEH2. Beryllium hydride. So, beryllium it has 2 electrons in the outermost cell. What is atomic number of beryllium? 4, isn't it? So, 2 electrons goes inside, 2 electrons outside. Beryllium 1s2, 2s2, isn't it? 4. So, these 2 electrons in the outermost shell. So, hydrogen, it combines with beryllium like this. Isn't it? But you see, 1, 2, 3, 4. Only 4 electrons are there in the outermost shell, but this is highly stable. It does not have 8 electrons, but it is having only 4 electrons, but still the compound is highly stable. So, this is incomplete octet. Number 2, odd electron molecule. Odd electron molecule. So some atoms have odd electron. For example, nitric oxide, NO is there. Isn't it? So here if you see the nitrogen is having three electrons. Now I put two here. It is combining with oxygen like this. So I am writing pair of electrons. So nitrogen and oxygen. You can see here it is having one electron. Odd electron we say. So nitrogen outermost shell contains five electrons. One, two, three, four, five electrons. Isn't it? Oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So two electrons it shares. Then also it contains one odd electron. So here it does not accept the octet rule. One more example is there. NO2 minus is there. So nitrogen combines with oxygen. Isn't it? Now here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You are writing pair of electrons. 2, 2, 2 electrons. So here 1 electron, 2, 4. How you write 4? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It must have 8. But this gets a positive sign and this gets a negative sign. So here also you can see odd electron. Nitrogen does not have 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Oxygen has. But nitrogen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons are there. Does not have 8 electrons. Now next one. Coming to the third limitations. That is expanded octet. Expanded octet means some compounds has more than 8 electrons. So here more than 8 electrons. Here less than 8 electrons. Okay. Now example if you see PCL5. Phosphorus pentachloride. So phosphorus is the central atom. You can see 5 chlorine. It combines with 5 chlorine. So here. I will write Cl5 chlorine. We said trigonal bipyramid. We are going to see all this in detail. So phosphorus if you see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10 electrons are there. So, phosphorus here has 10 electrons are there. So, it does not have 8 electrons. This is highly stable even though it has more than 8 electrons. Another example, SF6. Sulfur hexafluoride. Fluorine is there. So, we say hexafluoride. So, sulfur. So, 6 fluorine atoms are there, isn't it? So, sulfur. 1 up, 1 down. To this side you draw, to this side. So, fluorine. You can see. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, it has 12 electrons in the outermost shell. It combines with fluorine with 12 electrons, isn't it? So, here more than octet 8 electrons, hence we say expanded octet. So, all these are the exception. So, always we have 8 electrons, then only it is highly stable. But some compounds does not have 8 electrons, then also they are highly stable. So, this is very very important. They will ask you write two limitations in two marks. They will ask you what is octet rule. So, you must know what is octet rule and the limitations of octet rule. Now, next we go for types of bonds. Now, already in your lower classes, you have studied the type of bond, isn't it? Ionic bond, covalent bond, coordinate bond. So, again, same way, like revision, we are going to study here. How the ionic bond is formed, what are the factors affecting ionic bond. Okay. So, now here, types of bond. Types of bond. So we have three types. One is ionic bond. Ionic bond or electrovalent bond. Okay, so the name is same. Electrovalent bond. So they may ask you what is electrovalent bond or what is ionic bond. Second one we have covalent bond. Third one we have coordinate bond. Coordinate bond. So here we are going to see ionic and covalent. Coordinate bond is not there in your syllabus but we will see what is coordinate bond because you have to understand what is coordinate bond. Now coming to the first one, ionic bond. Ionic bond. So, here what happens in ionic bond? Here the bond takes place by complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So, ionic bond is a bond where the atom complete transfer of Electrons from one atom to another. One atom to another. Okay. So here the bond takes place when the electron transfer from one atom to another. That bond is called as ionic bond. So example you take sodium chloride. Very very easy simple example. So, when you take sodium, sodium, what is the atomic number? We know 11, isn't it? That is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, isn't it? So, first shell, second shell, third. So, first shell you have 2 electrons. So, I will write 2, second shell 8 electrons, 
third shell one electron. You can see the electrons up. So this is two is second shell three is. Why I am writing again and again is you must know very well. Okay. So every time I am writing, you also must know how to write the electronic configuration. Suddenly don't ask me how you get two eight one from the electronic configuration. Okay. Now it loses one electron. You can see there is one single electron. So sodium becomes plus and electron. It loses the electron. So we have seen in periodic classification also. If one electron goes outside, that means less electron you get Na plus. That means the cation size is smaller. We have studied that, isn't it? Now here what happens? It loses the electron, so it becomes two comma eight. Now what happens? Now Cl is there. Chlorine. Chlorine accepts the electron and becomes Cl minus. What is the electronic configuration of chlorine? Atomic number is seventeen. So you have two, eight, and then seven. Now it accepts one electron. It becomes two, eight, and eight. Isn't it? So here what happens? Sodium plus and Cl minus combine together. So you can write here Na plus plus Cl minus. Gives Na plus Cl minus. Again, you can write as NaCl. So sodium loses one electron. That electron is taken by the chlorine atom. So complete transfer of electron. Sodium loses the electron. Chlorine gains the electron. So there is a complete transfer of electron from one atom to another. Hence. Such type of bond is called as ionic bond. Clear? So example here is sodium chloride. Now what are the factors affecting here? Factors affecting. So again they will ask you in two marks question. What are the factors affecting ionic bond? So here you can see it loses the electron. So we have studied in periodic classification ionization energy. What is ionization energy? The energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of a gaseous atom. So, then, so we are going to remove the electron by giving energy. You are going to remove the electron. When the electron, the electron is easily removed. That means we give lesser energy. Enough. When you really give a lesser energy, the electron comes outside. So when the atom loses the electron, when the energy required is very very less, that means easily the ionic bond will be formed, isn't it? If electron does not come easily, the ionic bond cannot be formed, isn't it? So the atoms which loses the electron very easily with lesser energy can easily form the ionic bond. So what are the factors? First one. Low ionization energy of cation to form the cation, isn't it? So very very low ionization energy. Number two. So here what happens? The chlorine accepts the electron. That means what we study the property in periodic classification: electron gain enthalpy. So electron gain enthalpy means the energy released when an electron is added to the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom isn't it so when the electron is added the energy is released so high high electron gain enthalpy that means the chlorine easily takes the electron so easily takes the electron more energy is given so when any atom takes the electron very easily by giving high ionization energy will form ionic bond very easily third one very 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 important is lattice energy or enthalpy so they will ask you in one mark very very important question will be asked in one mark what is lattice energy so lattice means crystal solid structure we want to break that solid structure so how much energy is required to break that solid into its constituents now you can see sodium chloride is there now this is the solid 
isn't it? Now we want to break this. If you want to break this, you have to give some energy. Even if you want to break one bent stick, you have to give the energy. Then not it will break, isn't it? So how much energy is required? You are giving the energy. So the energy required to break one mole of the compound or solid ionic compound into its gaseous atom. That means you are breaking the sodium chloride. You get Na plus and Cl minus. So that, that is called as constituents. Constituents means the part of this. This is the ions formed from sodium chloride. So the amount of energy required to break one mole of the solid compound into its constituents. So I am going to write here again lattice energy. Okay. Because very very important you have to by heart this lattice energy always they used to ask him one more question. What is defined? Lattice enthalpy or lattice energy. Now, you can see here, lattice energy, okay. So, the energy required, the energy required to break one mole of, one mole of solid substance into its constituents into its constituents or gaseous atoms now you can see sodium chloride you have to convert to Na plus and Cl minus so how much energy is needed to break this or you can say in other way also the energy released, the energy released when one mole of, same thing, here you are writing energy required, here you are going to stress energy released when one mole of solid substance formed from, here you write formed from its constituents, constituent atoms or gaseous atoms or ions in the tetra. The reverse of this, even you can see Na plus and Cl minus can form NaCl. So this is one mole. Okay. So the, from the constituents also you can form the compound. Isn't it? This is the formation of the compound. So but during the formation energy is released. So how much energy is released when one mole of the compound formed from its constituent atoms? Here you are going to write as form. There you are going to write as break. That's all. Here required, here is released. So either way you can define the lattice energy or enthalpy. So again very very important one lattice enthalpy. Now, going to the second one. Second one is covalent bond. So, what do you mean by covalent bond? So, ionic bond is, takes place by complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another. Isn't it? Now, we are going to see second one. Covalent bond. Covalent bond takes place by sharing of electrons between atoms. Formed by, formed by sharing of electrons, sharing of electrons between atoms and between atoms they will share the electrons. Example is Cl2, smallest example you can write hydrogen also. So hydrogen you can see there, hydrogen it is having one electron plus another hydrogen is having one electron. So each can share the electron so that it gets hydrogen 
here is 1, here is 1, 2. You get a bond here. Now we take for Cl2. Cl2 you can see there, chlorine has 7 electron in its outermost shell, isn't it? 2, 8, 7, 0. So another chlorine plus, another chlorine is there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons. So each need one electron to okay? get 8 electrons in the outermost shell. So these two what happens? They will share the electrons. So you can get here as Cl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again this chlorine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now here it shares, isn't it? So this chlorine also gets 8 electrons. This chlorine also gets 8 electrons. So you can get Cl bond, Cl. Single bond is formed. So covalent bond can form single bond, double bond, triple bond. Suppose here only one electron they share with each other, you get a single bond. Suppose if they share two electrons, example, second example, oxygen is there. So what is the atomic? So two oxygen are there. So oxygen atomic number is 8, isn't it? So valence electron it has 6 electrons. So, so here if you write 1 as 2, 2 as 2, 2p, 4, isn't it? So the outermost electron you can see there, 2 plus 4, you have 6 electrons. So if you write oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. Now plus another oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So it needs two more electrons, isn't it? So what we do, it will share the two electrons. So what it forms? Oxygen, two. Okay. So these two electrons it gives, these two electrons also it gives. So it shares two electrons. So you can see a double bond is formed. Always remember, with wherever you see the oxygen, you can see a double bond there. Okay, nitrogen means always triple bond. So wherever you see the oxygen, it can combine with nitrogen, it can combine with carbon, but always it has two bond. Okay, so now here oxygen has a double bond. The remaining electrons you can write 1, 2, 3, 4. If there are double bonds, you have to write two pairs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here also you can see the two bonds are there. Now if you go for the third one, example nitrogen. So what is the atomic number of nitrogen is 7, isn't it? 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Now outermost contains how many? 5 electrons are there, isn't it? So nitrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plus another nitrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It needs 3 electrons, isn't it? Both nitrogen needs 3 electrons. So 3 electrons are shared between them. So you can see 1, 2, 3 here. Here also 1, 2, 3. So those 3 electrons will share between them. So nitrogen, 3 electrons from here. You can see 5, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now another nitrogen also you can see 3 and 5. Now these three will share with each other. So you will get nitrogen. So the triple bond is present between the nitrogen with one lone pair of electron. So you can see that. So this is how you get double bond, single bond, double bond, triple bond, etc. So this is how a covalent bond is formed between the atoms. That is sharing of electrons. When two atoms share the electrons between themselves to get 8 electrons or to get complete configuration, octet configuration, the bond form is called as covalent bond. Clear? Now, we go for coordinate bond. So, what is a coordinate bond? Now, what is the coordinate bond? Okay. Now, coordinate bond means one atom gives completely 
lone pair of electron. What do you mean by lone pair of electron? Lone pair of electron means it gives two electrons completely. Two electrons to the other atom. Example. Okay. So, it gives lone pair of electrons. Lone pair of electrons are transferred to another atom. Example, you have ammonia BF3. Why I put an arrow mark? Now you see the nitrogen. We know the nitrogen has 5 electrons in the outermost shell. So first I will write the configuration. Then you will understand easily. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Isn't it? So here you have 2 electrons. In the p orbital you have 3 electrons. 1, 2 and 3 electrons. Now these 3 electrons are taken by hydrogen. Taken by hydrogen. Now what about BF3? Boron. Isn't it? BF3. So in BF3 boron. Atomic number is 5. 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Isn't it? So boron has 5 electrons. So you have 2, 2 and 1 electron. Now here you can see these two electrons and P orbital has three, one electron. Now on excitation what happens? On excitation this is one. Now here you can see this electron goes here. This is it on excitation. Now you have one orbital completely empty free. So this is in the ground state. This is in the excited state. Now here what happens? The fluorine goes and occupies here. So, fluorine goes and occupies all. So, BF3 comes. BF3 comes. Now, what happens? Here it is empty. Now, this lone pair is given completely to this empty orbital. So, how we represent? Nitrogen has three hydrogen forming the covalent bond. And those two pair is given. Now, boron is there. It is having three fluorine. Now here, so the lone pair of electrons, these are called as lone pair of electrons. Those lone pair is given to boron. Hence we give as an arrow mark. This type of bond is called as coordinate bond. So again, you can see here, when completely transfer of lone pair of electrons, you can say the bond formed is a coordinate bond and the bond is given by a simple arrow mark. Just you have to understand that. So, clear? Now, then coming to the next one which is called as a formal charge. So, very very important one, formal charge. So, they will ask you calculate the formal charge in ozone. So, now what do you mean by the formal charge? Formal charge means it is not complete charge. It is the apparent charge present on the atom of polyatomic molecule. For example, you see CO3 2 minus. Now it has the charge 2 minus, isn't it? But this is the charge of an atom. Polyatomic means more than one atom, more than two atoms. Now you can see carbon is there and three oxygen are there, totally four are there. But it has two minus. The 2 minus belongs to which atom? Isn't it? So, formal charge is the apparent charge of the atom in a polyatomic molecule. So, we are going to calculate this 2 minus belongs to which atom and which minus, minus belongs to carbon or which oxygen. So, first we will go for the example of ozone. O3 molecule. So, if you write the electron dot structure O. 3 oxygen, isn't it? Now you can see, when you write Lewis dot structure, you have to write for ozone also. So here, one side you can have double bond will form, one side single bond. So this oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the structure you should write, okay? Now we are going to find out the charge of this ozone. Now here you can see you can number this as 1 
and this has 2 and this has 3. How to find the formal charge? So there is a formula to find the formal charge. So the formal charge is equal to number of valence electron. Number of valence electron minus V is valence electron minus number of unshared electrons. Unshared electrons. Unshared electrons means unshared electrons means lone pair of electrons which is not involved in the bond formation. Minus half into shared electrons. So shared electrons means how many electrons are shared. Now we are going to find for 3 oxygen. First of all, first oxygen. For oxygen 1. Okay. So Fc, formal charge equal to. Okay, so listen carefully. Number of valence electron. So oxygen. What is the valence electron in oxygen? 6. It is fixed. It will not change. For all the oxygen, the valence electron is 6. Isn't it? So valence electron 6. Minus. Number of unshared electrons. How many unshared? Only 2 electrons are there which is unshared. Remaining all is formed in the bond. So only these 2 are unpaired. So write 2. Minus. Half. Into. Shared electrons. How many shared? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons are shared. Isn't it? So you can see shared electrons means you have to take with this oxygen. It is sharing. So 6 electrons. So you can write as 6. So cancel here 3. Isn't it? So 6 minus 2 minus 3 you will get plus 1. So the charge of first oxygen is plus 1. Now coming to for oxygen 2. For oxygen 2. Second oxygen. So formal charge. Formal charge is equal to. Again valence electron 6 minus number of unshared. How many unshared? 1, 2, 3, 4 are unshared. 4 minus 1 by 2 into. Shared electrons. How many shared? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 are shared. So equal to 2 1s, 2 2s. So 6 minus 4 minus 2 equal to 0. Now coming to the third one. For oxygen 3. Fc equal to. Again 6 minus. Valence electron will not change. 6 minus. Now number of unshared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are unshared. 6 minus 1 by 2 into. Isn't it? How many shared? 2 electrons. So 2. Cancel. So, equal to 6 minus 6 minus 1. Remember, you have minus 1 here. So, you can see here as minus 1. So, the charge is minus 1. So, here the charge is 0. Here the charge is minus 1. Okay. So, you can find for CO3 2 minus also. How this 2 minus comes? Clear? So, I am going to stop with this. And what is the advantage of this formal charge? This formal charge helps to find out the stability of the atom. That means lesser charge, more stable. So that is the significance of this formal charge. So tomorrow again, we will continue with the next topic. Thank you students. Please study. So after completing half of the portion, then I will give you the notes and the questions to write it. Okay, thank you.